All right, so now that we have successfully created a resource, organized our files, learned the basics of uh, getting started up to you know this point, the next thing is to um, create a, a Terraform Cloud Workspace and migrate our local backend to our remote workspace. And the reason we want to do this is because we have this terraform.tf uh, state file, and this is what contains all of our information about the state of our infrastructure. And if we want to collaborate with other people, we need to have it in a shared space. And so Terraform Cloud is one of the options, and I would say the best option out there. And so I want to show you how to use Terraform Cloud, which, by the way, is free. Um, and so before we do that, I just want to show you uh, 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 what workspace we're in. So if you type in Terraform uh, workspace list, what you're going to see is a single workspace called default. So this is a special um, workspace, which every project comes with a default workspace, and you cannot delete it. So here you could create multiple workspaces like development and production to have um, different variables for your uh, infrastructure if you're deploying to different um, uh, different environments. But for the purpose of getting started, we're just going to work with the default. But the thing is, right now, these state files are here locally. And so what we need to do is define a backend. And so far, uh, the backend that we're using is the local backend. And that would be defined, we had put it in our um, providers. Probably been smarter to just call this like Terraform, put this in the main. You know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this here, cut this, and I'm going to put this in main because I think it makes more sense over here. There's not like a true science to putting things places. You just kind of have to feel them out. So in this Terraform settings block, this is where we would specify our backend. Okay. And so right now we are using local, whether you specified or not, you are. Okay. And so we want to swap, uh, swap that out to remote, which we'll use Terraform Cloud. So what I will do is we'll just say Terraform local migrate uh, because they have a nice tutorial here for this. But I just want the code from it. So this is pretty close to what we want. This is for multiple workspaces. We're just doing local. So this is what I want. OK, so what I'm going to do whoops, is just bring this back on over. And I just want to copy this interior part. And it doesn't matter if you put it above or below providers, but we'll have a back end. We're going to specify the host name. We're going to need to set our organization, and we're going to need to set our workspace name. So now what we're going to do is make our way over to terraform.io. And what I want you to do is create yourself a new account. It does not require a credit card or anything. It's very easy to set up. You just have to confirm your email. And then once you have done that, go ahead and sign in. And what you'll need to do is create yourself an organization. It'll probably prompt you right away. So it's very easy. Just go here and give your organization name and provide an email. It's pretty much those two options. And once you have your organization, you can go ahead and start creating workspaces. And so I'm going to create a new workspace here. And we're going to be presented with three options, version control workflow, CLI driven workflow, API driven workflow. Version control workflow is, let's say, every time we push a commit to our repository, then it would trigger uh, to do a Terraform apply to execute the code. But we don't want to do that. We just want to use a CLI, which is what we've been doing all along. So here, I'm just going to say Terraform, um, Terraform example. Well, maybe we'll just say getting started here, actually. Getting started. And we will go ahead and create this workspace. And now that we have the name of the workspace and the organization, so we'll put those in here. So my workspace is called getting started. And I just want to make sure I have the right name for this uh, organization here. Um, I think it just would be called whatever it is. So for mine, it looks like it's just called exam pro. I think you'd match it whatever's up here, OK? If it doesn't work, we'll find out in a second, though. Eh? So we will paste that in there. And so all we need to do to move from our local to a remote is type in Terraform init to migrate it over. And actually, we probably need to log in first. So before we do that, well, I can't stop it. That's fine. Um, so I'm just going to say no. I don't want to migrate just yet. So I'm going to type in Terraform login first because we want to authenticate with Terraform Cloud. So I've already done this previously, so it already has a file saved over here. OK, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete mine. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to delete mine so you, you can see a similar experience, OK? So I'm going to do Terraform login. And it's going to say, if successful, Terraform will store it in plain text in this uh, area. Do you want to do this? Say yes. 
And all this is doing is generating out an API token for a user. So it's going over here and um, choose the description to help identify the token later. And this is just for um, exam pro. We should say like Terraform Associate maybe because we're actually creating the token. Okay, so your token, we can copy it out. Um, click on the token to copy and paste it into your Terraform login prompt to continue. So I'll hit copy and we will go back to Terraform here and then we will paste in the value. I know you couldn't see it, but I definitely pasted it in. And so it's now been pasted in there. I'm gonna go back here and hit done. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, delete my old tokens. This is the one I made a month ago. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And again, you don't want to share these tokens with anybody. Just make sure um, you know you keep those secret because then they'll have access to your Terraform account. So now that we have that ready to go, it's actually kind of cool. They have a little getting started project here. I didn't even notice about it. But uh, so now what we can do is type in Terraform init. Because now that we uh, have a local API key, and it's just going to say, hey, you have a pre-existing state that was found while migrating the previous local backend to the newly configured remote. No existing state was found in the newly configured remote backend. Do you want to copy the state to the remote backend? Before we do that, I just want to go over to our workspace and click into it just to show you that we have nothing under runs, nothing under states, nothing under variables. There's nothing in there, okay? And so what I'm going to do here is just type yes. And that's going to uh, take the Terraform state file and move it to your uh, workspace. So it's finished. That was pretty quick. So what I'm going to do is go back over here and we're going to just click on here and refresh. Okay, it looks like we also have the instructions here, which we could do. So if we go over to states, here is our state file. So we open it up and it's all the same contents of the Terraform.tf state. So what we can do now is go over here and we can go ahead and delete this. Uh, normally you wouldn't want to delete your backup, but I just want to see if uh, when we run Terraform apply, if it'll actually produce another backup backup locally here. Okay. And so now that we have our infrastructure there, all we could all we need to do is now run Terraform apply. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go here and type in Terraform apply and we'll see what it changes. Like there's no infrastructure changes, so nothing should change, but let's see what happens to the fact that we moved our remote state over. Okay, so right away it, say, it says no value for required variable. So the thing is we have it set in our TF bars over here but the problem is, is that the workspace does not have it because what's going to be running Terraform is actually uh, a run environment. There's actually a server that's part of Terraform Cloud that executes your code. And so these variables are on a local machine. There's no way for them to get uh, up there. So we have to go set them under variables. And we have two options here. So there's Terraform variables. So uh, these are settings used as the Terraform.tfrs to use a non-string variable Okay, and then we have environment variables. So we have two different ways to set it. Um, the way I'm gonna set it is a Terraform variable. So we have a key and a value. But this is generally how you'd wanna do it. So we have our instance type. So we will go and put the name in there and this is gonna be a T2 micro. Okay, and I'm just simply copying them over. Notice over here we have a checkbox for HCL. So parse the field as the HC, uh, HCL language. That's if we wanted to do something a bit more advanced. Mark it as sensitive if we need to, and that's not something to do. So this is gonna be the size, of, and this is optional, but I'm just putting it the size of the EC2 instance. Okay. And we'll go ahead and set that variable. Great, and so what we'll do is now try to run this again. So now it's saying, um, so now it's saying no credential providers, so no valid pr uh, providers in the chain. And so we did specify in our providers that we want to use our profile default. But the problem is, is that this is not going to work for, this is not going to work for our, um, our workspace here because we actually have to set it in here in the environment variables. 
So what I'm going to do is just go look up the Terraform provider. Oh, sorry. So we'll go to Terraform um, provider AWS. I want to do this on the registry. And what we'll do is try to look for authentication. Um, I'm just making sure that this is what well, this says GitHub. So if you just click back here in the top left corner, go to providers, go to AWS, go to documentation. Usually in the beginning, they'll, they'll have like information in the guides that explain like how to um, configure it. And so that's what I'm just looking for here. Maybe just click on AWS provider. So yeah, here's a section on authentication. So here it would say like access key, access a secret uh, secret key. But what we want to do is set these environment variables because that's the way we're going to have to do it with Terraform Cloud. So what we'll do is go here and um, specify this key here. So we'll say uh, AWS access key ID. And we're going to have to go get those credentials. So I'm going to just type in by AWS credentials. And there is my key. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. Again, that's secret. Don't ever share it with anybody. And this is definitely sensitive, so we're going to mark that as sensitive. And we'll save that. And the other one's going to be called AWS Secret uh, Access Key. Just making sure I spelled that right. I'm just looking off screen here to see if I spelled it right. And we'll go ahead and copy that. Paste that in. Just make sure there's no uh, trailing spaces. We're going to say that is also sensitive. We also want the region. So AWS default region. And I'm going to set mine as US East 1. That's not sensitive. It's not a big deal. And so this should give us enough to be able to execute that command now. Again, there is no new infrastructure to create, but just to get it to run is what we're trying to do here. I'm just going to write and quit. And we will try Terraform Apply again and now see if we get better luck this time around, OK? Great, so notice it says no changes. Uh, your infrastructure matches the configuration. So there hasn't been anything that has changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a Terraform destroy because I want to tear this all down. And then I want to maybe change uh, the variable within Terraform Cloud. And we'll do Terraform apply just to make sure that it does work with Terraform Cloud. And indeed, we aren't losing our old state file, OK? So yeah, again, I just ran Terraform destroy for real. And I said yes. So we're just going to uh, wait a while here until all the infrastructure is destroyed, and I'll see you back here in a moment, OK? All right, so it took a little bit of time to actually just generate out the uh, delete plan. So I'm just going to go ahead and type yes. And that should proceed to destroy all the resources. We'll just give it a moment here. There we go. And so it's deleting everything. So I'll see you back here when this is complete. OK. All right, so now that we destroyed our infrastructure, what I want to do is just go ahead to our AWS one here. I just want to uh, comment out the module for the time being, just because we do not need it. Uh, there are three types of comments in Terraform. I believe we have this one. So we have uh, this is the like JavaScript multi-line one. But you could also be doing this or this. It's up to you. Uh, and so what we'll do now is do a Terraform apply. And we'll notice that it's just going to provision that EC2 instance. So I'm just waiting for it to show me the option yes. There we go. So we'll type in yes. And I'm going to go back to Terraform Cloud. Uh, wherever I put it. So I might have to go back to terraform.io here. I might have closed it on my own. Okay, so here you can see that it's applying right now. We can even see it uh, as it's running. So it did the plan over here, and now it's doing the apply. I could even cancel it from here if I really wanted to. I just want to show you that you have your previous states here. So every time you do a deploy, uh, it's going to store a state file. So it's technically versioned. Um, notice that uh, if we open up our backups, there's no longer a Terraform backup file. Um, I suppose there's really no need for one because if we have all these states, 
Um, in here, these are technically our backups. So in the uh, slides, I might contradict that and say that the file remains, but apparently it does not, okay? And I'll see you here when this is done, okay? All right, so after a short little wait there, it says it's complete. Again, we'll just go over here to our overview. We'll see that it has been applied. We can see the resources under here. And so this is our AWS resource. We could even see our outputs as well. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in the getting started. So now it's all just about cleanup. So what I want you to do is go back here and we're gonna go type in Terraform destroy to tear down all this infrastructure, which is just a single server right now. And actually I'm just going to, oops, I'm trying to stop it here. I wanna do, I think we can do auto approve here, auto approve. And actually, if we wanted to do it the, uh, the other way, we could do destroy auto approve. And I'll see you back here in a moment when this infrastructure has been destroyed, okay?